What's up, guys? Chris over here at the I-80 Boys. Look, you guys have asked. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you my 12-team playoff prediction for 2024 here. Um, trying to find a, a playoff bracket, by the way, online is painful as hell. Like You'd have better luck finding a needle in a haystack. But I did find something, so I'm going to pull this up, and we'll take a look at it. And I will explain and pick... Who I think is going to win. So if you guys can see this here. I got Ohio State at number one. And I probably should tell you guys the criteria. Um, the five highest uh, ranked conference champions. And then the next seven highest seeds based on rankings. Will earn a spot in the 12 team playoff this year. So that's how that works. So I have Ohio State. Now I think you could flip flop this with Georgia. At the end of the year. I think both these teams are going to be up there. To start the season both teams have high expectations are expected to win or compete for a national title this year. I don't think there's much debate there. Now, I could see how you think maybe Oregon will win the Big Ten. I'm with you. I understand that. Um, I, I would have no knock there if you flip-flopped Oregon and Ohio State. Both those teams are loaded. they got to play once in the regular season. More than likely, in my opinion, they're going to play for the Big Ten title. And there's a good chance they could split that. And then you got both of them in anyway. So, I think you're going to have to go 10-2 and two or better in the regular season to make the playoffs this year. I just truly do. I know there's a lot of debate about that. But 9-3, and three, man, probably not enough this year. It's just the way it's looking. In my opinion, we're going to find out at the end of the year, though. So I got Ohio State, like I said, at number one. Right, guys? Number two, I have Georgia. Like I said, I think Georgia's the best team in the SEC. That's just my opinion. That could change. The SEC is loaded at the top. A lot of good teams. Texas, Ole Miss. Um, Mizzou, um, with their schedule, should have a really good record at the end of the year. Tennessee, LSU maybe. Hell, you never know, Texas A&M. There's people betting on them this year. I think that's crazy, but it's definitely out there. So um, here's the two conferences I have a tough, tough time predicting is the ACC and the Big 12, right? I actually – I have Miami winning the ACC this year. I know that sounds crazy if you guys have followed the channel for any – amount of time the past year and a half here uh i shit on miami a lot uh this year i am not i don't know uh, what it really is with me but i really like the cam ward pick up a quarterback i like their defense i do i think it's going to be really really good this year i think miami's going to have a really good season finally i think they're going to win the acc it's been but when's the last time? No, I don't think Miami's ever won the ACC in the 20 years that they've been there. So that would be nuts. Um, I think Crystal Ball's a good coach. Uh, he, he needs to work on the X's and O's. But, boy, the guy can recruit. they got a ton of talent in there. I think Cam Ward was a deciding factor for me for them to win the ACC this year. Um, alluding to that, though, like you have Florida State out there. A lot of people think Florida State is going to win the ACC. And I'm not knocking that. I'm down on Florida State this year, which is – which hurts a little bit because I was really high on them last year. I, I just think they, they they lost a lot offensively, you know. And um, does it mean that they're not going to be great this year on offense? They might be. Um, the defense I do know will be good under Norvell. Clemson, here's another team. I just personally think they're moving in the wrong direction. I think Clemson's going to be a good team this year. They got to get back to what they were doing a couple of years ago. Easier said than done, though. I think NC State is a team. Uh, we've heard it over here at the I-80 Boys a ton this offseason. You guys are sleeping on NC State. You're sleeping on Louisville. Uh, Virginia Tech, another team in there. I'll be honest with you guys. The ACC is a crapshoot, in my opinion. I actually had the hardest time trying to predict who's going to win the ACC out of any of the conferences out there. I think there's just a slew of teams out there, like the Big 12 most years, that could potentially win this thing. I just happen to lean Miami. You can let me know why I'm wrong in the comments. Moving on, Utah. I like Utah. There's no joke. Um, I know I sound like I dick ride Utah week in and week out. I like Kyle Whittingham, but I like the defense more than anything. I think they're going to fit very, very well into the Big 12 with no Oklahoma, no Texas over there. Uh, the other team I do like as well is K-State. Um, but I have Utah winning it this year. That's just my prediction. Like I said, I might be right. I might be wrong on this one, but I got to, you know, uh, put my foot in the ground here, and I like Utah this year. I just do. I think the schedule's favorable. I think they're going to be a good team. I think one thing with Utah, I know they're not going to get blown out in any games. That's just Cam Cam Rising's back at quarterback. He's played a ton of football. They got one of the best tight ends in the country. I think they're going to run the ball as well, and I think that defense is going to be really, really solid. So with that being said, those are my four teams. Those are the four teams, guys, that get the bye, which is huge. Um, I think that's a massive advantage um, if you can win your conference. So. 
With that being said, this is where it gets dicey. Um, and I had a hell of a time trying to predict this 5 through 12 thing. Mind you, I spent a lot of time on this too. Um, I didn't just uh, copy and paste somebody else's. I give my own opinions. And uh, I I'm open to hear what you guys think as well. But number five, I have Oregon. Again, I think this is going to come down to either Ohio State or them for the one and five spot just whoever wins the big 10 like i said they play in the regular season i love oregon i like what they're doing with dan lanning that team is uber uber loaded with talent on both sides of the ball just like ohio state um they're they're two of the top three teams in the country right now let's be honest before the season starts so um i do like oregon there at five six this is a tough one i find myself every year um i keep thinking to myself i know nick saban's not there anymore but i'm like Every year I did last year, I'm like, ah, Alabama's not going to be near as good. And then it's like over the off season, I don't know if it's the Bama fan base or, or what I listen to, I seem to get higher and higher on them before the season starts. I did that last year as well. I, I like Bama this year as far as a team. I know it's questionable. A lot of people think they might not make it because we just don't know what DeBoer's going to do there, right? This is the tougher conference in the Pac-12. Uh, he doesn't have Michael Penix at quarterback. He has Jalen Milrow. They're totally two different styles of quarterbacks. I do, though, think with Bama, if they're smart, they're going to run the football. they got one of the best offensive linemen, if not the best offensive line in the country. The defense should be good. We know one thing about Alabama year in and year out. They are loaded with talent. They've lost a lot of people. They brought a ton of people back in. It's going to be nuts what they do this year. I just think Bama, just because... You know, and I'm not I'm not saying Bama because of the name. I know the brand. I know they're one of the greatest college football programs ever. I get that Nick Saban's the greatest coach ever. He's not there anymore. I do think that they're going to regress a little bit, but I still think they're good enough to make a 12-team playoff. I think they're going to be very competitive in the SEC, especially if that defense comes in and plays well. Uh, I, I've seen Jalen Milrow, man. The kid is an uber crazy good athlete. He's going to keep them in games. They got some weapons. I love Justin Haynes. Like I said, I think they're going to run the ball a ton. They're going to be all right. So I have Bama at six. That's a tough one for me because I could see where they could probably be at seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe. But I think if you get Bama into the playoffs, they can do anything. I think Bama fans would be happy just to make the playoffs and let it play out because Bama's a tough out no matter who's who's there. Moving on, though, we're going to go to seven, Texas. This is tough for me because I'm not as high on Texas this year as everybody else. Here's the thing, though. Texas's schedule is pretty favorable. It really is. Um now, depending on what you think their defense is going to be this year, this depends on a lot as far as seeding goes with me because I don't think their defense is going to be elite. Um, I'm a big defensive guy when it comes to ranking teams and all of that. If you follow the show, you know that. I think Texas is going to have some question marks this year defensively. I think they're going to get away with it a little bit because their offense is so good. But... I like Sark. I like what he's doing there. I know they've had some injuries lately, lost two of their five running backs to season-ending injuries, which is never a good thing. But Texas has got a ton of talent, especially in the offensive side of the ball with Quinn Ewer. So uh, I, I think Texas should be there. Um, some people have them winning the damn thing this year. It would shock me if they did that. I know that may sound like a hot take, but Texas is going to get into the playoffs this year, and uh, I got them at seven. Moving on here, number eight and nine here. I'm going to talk about both these teams quick. Told you, I like I like K State. I'm high on them compared to most people. I would say almost everybody on the internet, to be honest with you. I like Chris Kleiman. I love the defense. I have talked about Avery Johnson a ton. I have convinced myself that uh, to even put some money down on him to win the Heisman this year. I know it sounds crazy. I just like the kid. I think he's really good. I think he's going to be better than Will Howard was there, and I like Will Howard. Uh, but I like the defense, and I think them and Utah, man, to me are just the clear-cut better teams over in the Big 12 this year, and they should be. I, I just think defense travels, and both these teams got good defenses. Um, the offenses, I wouldn't say the offenses are either question marks or, or have any debate as far as what they can do. It's more just, you know, they're going to probably drop a game in the regular season, but these two teams across the board week in and week out, it's got more talent than everybody else does. I mean, especially on the defensive side of the ball, so... I know how the Big 12 is. It's usually a track meet. It's shootouts. These two teams got great defenses. By far the best two, te two teams in the, the Big 12 with defenses. So I think it's a shoe-in for both these two, honestly. Unless something like drastic happens, I don't see how K-State and Utah don't get in this year. I know that sounds crazy to some people. I know it's the Big 12. It's hard to predict. Oklahoma State is a team that I am really high on. I have them just missing out. Um, 
We'll see what happens there. So moving on here, we, we got number nine, right? Notre Dame, and I've talked about this a thousand times. I'm not going to say it and beat it to death today, but I, with their schedule, I have them losing one game this year. That automatically will get you in. If they went 10-2, and two, I'd take them off this, this playoff list. Um, the, the A&M game off rip is going to be crazy because A&M's maybe the seventh, eighth best team in the SEC, honestly, in my opinion. If Notre Dame loses to them, I mean, what do, what do you think Notre Dame is? You know what I mean? I think Notre Dame wins that game, even though they are underdogs currently, which is crazy. Um, they play here in a couple weeks. Um, it is at uh, Kyle Allen Field, but I, I honestly think that Notre Dame is going to be just good enough to get in. I think they go 11-1 and in the regular season. If they went 10-2, and I would not put them in here. I know that pisses some people off. I just think that Notre Dame is so scared to play in a conference, which bothers me, and they don't play a conference title game, which really bothers me, like everybody else on this list. So I have Notre Dame at 9. What they do, we're going to find out this year. It'll be interesting to see. I think Marcus Freeman's, what, in his fourth year now? Um, they'll be a solid team, though. I like Riley Leonard at quarterback. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks in the country. Just love the kid. He plays with a ton of heart. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Now, number 10. A team that I think people are sleeping on. Personally, I had to take a stance here. I like Tennessee this year. Um, you'll notice I don't have Ole Miss on this list, or LSU for that matter. I like Tennessee this year. I think Nico is going to be a good quarterback in college football for the foreseeable future. I like this kid. Um, he showed me a lot in that, in that game against Iowa. Iowa did play a lot of their starters defensively, almost every one of them last year. And Tennessee just, just manhandled Iowa. I know you can say what you want about Iowa in the Big Ten, but... I like this kid. I think he's, he's going to be a good quarterback. I don't think he'll be a bust. I thought Joe Milton was a little bit of a bust um, as far as that goes last year. And if the defense comes to play for Tennessee this year, I see them going 10-2, and two and they're going to be tough. I think they're going to be a tough out this year. I know Tennessee has struggled really the past 15 to 20 years putting together consistent seasons. They, they had that year with uh, Hendon Hooker a couple years ago, which was amazing, and then kind of they lost a little bit there, at the, a little bit of mojo at the end of the year when they lost to Georgia, and I think they got blown out by, like, South Carolina the last game of the year. I, I think Heupel's doing a good thing there. I think he's the best coach they've had there in a long, long time. I think Tennessee will be a competitive this year and a team that's going to find themselves um, on the brink of making the 12-team playoff, in my opinion. Um, moving on here, 11, Penn State. I, I got to put them in. It was between them and USC this year. Now, I'm really high on USC, which is crazy. I think they get the defense addressed over there, but I just don't think it's going to be enough with their schedule. I think Penn State can go 10-2. and two, Therefore, that would give you the edge. And Penn State, man, we've been waiting for years and years, and they would have made so many of these 12-team playoffs the last 10 years because the only two teams they lose to is Michigan and Ohio State because they can't score any points, and they seem not to be able to stop the run when they play smash-mouth football teams like Michigan and Ohio State. I mean, it is what it is. I like James Franklin. Um, but I think Penn State gets in this year. The running backs, I don't have any questions about those two studs. Uh, their defense should be good. It should be really good. Um, a lot of it falls on Drew Aller, man. man. And, and I know I have come on here and harped on him um, a couple times last season. It was probably pretty critical of the kid. I know he's a good quarterback. I know he's very efficient. He doesn't turn the ball over, and I get all of that. And I like that a lot out of your quarterback. But I need to see him make some bigger throws in bigger games. And if I see that this year, and I think he will take a step forward, Penn State's going to be a tough team. They're kind of forgotten about in the Big Ten because it's always Michigan, it's always Ohio State, now it's Oregon right there in that mix. I, I see some stuff with, with Penn State, and, and uh, I have Michigan now obviously not making this, and I think Penn State beats them out and USC out for the third spot. So I have three teams in there from the Big Ten, mind you. Um, four from the SEC, and if you'll notice here before I get to my 12th team, I only have one team from the ACC. I think it's going to be a jumbled up mess up there at the top. I know that sounds crazy. Could Florida State get in? Absolutely. Clemson? Yes, they could. I think NC State is a team people are sleeping on a little bit. Virginia Tech is a team I like a lot, too. Uh, not to sit here and make this about the ACC, but again, I know that sounds crazy. I only got one team. One team. And there's no criteria on how many teams can make it there, or anything like that of any, any conference. I just think the ACC is going to be a, a jumbled up 9-3, and 10-2 and two type of mess. And I had Miami coming out of that, as I said. So, 12, I have Memphis. This is throwing a dart at a dartboard. There are a couple teams out there. Boise State, Appalachian State, UTSA, Memphis. Um, hell, I don't know. Rice. I mean, you could throw a 1,000 different teams out there that's going to win one of those conferences and probably run the table, and they would get this 12 spot. 
I don't know who that's going to be. I do know Memphis brings back a ton of production, though, and they're usually a really good team. Most years, you know, I, I, I bet a lot of uh, football games in college, whether it's the MAC, the WAC, um, any of those, the AAC, any of them, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I know Memphis is always a pretty good team, and uh, that's where I'm leaning this year. I don't have a, a ton of, like, hard, solid evidence to come on here and tell you to put Memphis in your 12-team playoff by any means, but that's just a crapshoot type of pick, and we'll see what happens there. That could go to a, a slew of teams. So now I got my playoff bracket set, right, guys? And uh, I'm going to click on the teams that I think are going to win here. I'll talk a little bit about the matchups, which I think this is, like, the greatest thing ever to happen. You can tell I'm excited about this. I don't know if you guys follow, like, March Madness, but I'm a big basketball nut, too. And uh, I love that time of year, man. It's so fun to watch 64 teams battle it out, and there's upsets, and there's teams that you never heard of make it and win in a couple games. This is great for college football, man, because there's a lot of good football teams out there every single year that don't make the four-team playoff. We've talked about Penn State. I thought Georgia was probably the second-best team in the country, if not the first last year. Um, I would have loved to see them play Michigan. I thought those two teams all year long just to me look like the best two teams. Alabama, what they did to get in was amazing by beating Georgia. Look at the stories with Washington to Texas last year. That was a great game. It was a great game. Um, those two teams were fun to watch, especially offensively. All the freaking talent at wide receiver in those games. Guess what, man? We get more of that now. I am freaking pumped, man, for the 12-team playoff, as you can see. So this is great for college football. I wanted to talk about that. And what's even better is like the fan base, man. Ohio State, Utah, Miami, and Georgia in my bracket here. They get that buy, and they get home field advantage, man. To watch a college football game with the everything at stake at home in these college venues, dude, at the Horseshoe, you know, in Athens. I mean, this stuff is going to be awesome, man. I can't wait that, can't wait to see that. And you know, a little bit about myself, guys. Before I get into this, man, I, I always say this. I know it sounds super cliche, maybe corny, but. I'm a college football fan. I just happen to love Nebraska, but I love college football as a whole. You know, I have to explain that a lot because I think people in this world get so stuck on their teams and how dare anybody know anything about my team than I don't know or, you know, knows more than I do and that type of thing. Man, I just love college football. I know Christian's the same way over here at the I-80 boys. Man, we just really, really love watching football. I don't care who it is, who's playing. Um, it, it's just a great, a great thing. So moving on, I got that out of the way here. Notre Dame, K-State. This should be a great matchup, right? K-State would get the, the home field advantage here. And I got to take K-State. I, I, uh, I, I've talked about them at length. I, I think they're going to be a really good team. I love their defense. I think this game would just be a coin flip, personally. I think Notre Dame is a good enough team, too, as well. Like I said, it's hard to predict this because this is the future. Maybe one of these teams just looks like dog shit for half the year, and they only win seven or eight games. That definitely could happen. We've seen teams choke. We see teams come out of nowhere every year to make the playoff. But what I got right here on paper, I got K-State versus Notre Dame. Give me K-State in that one. Moving on, I think this is a no-brainer. I like Oregon. Um, I, nothing against Memphis or whoever they play, whether it's maybe a UTSA or, or uh, Appalachian State or Boise State or somebody like that. You, you got to roll with Oregon. We saw what Oregon did last year against Liberty, right? Liberty was a good team. They're a team that could make it again this year with what they're bringing back. I think you got to – Oregon's just too talented, man. And, and <laughs> let's be real here. Let's go. Um, Penn State, Alabama. Who would want to watch that game? Now, this is a tough one for me, guys, because like I was looking at this. I'm like, I like Penn State, and I like their defense. And depending on what Bama is and what they do, here's my thing. that This matchup down to me comes down to, and this might never, ever happen. They may never play each other. But if they did, and it goes the way I think it does, I'm leaning Alabama here. Why? Not because they're the higher seed and it's at home. That helps a ton. Penn State has struggled to stop the run against really, really good teams that are run heavy, a la Michigan last year, Ohio State. Um I just got to go with Bama, man. I know that's crazy. It's not an SEC over a Big Ten thing, even though the SEC has pretty much owned my Big Ten. Um, I would have to take Bama in that game. I think they're just – I honestly think that Bama's just going to run the football this year. That's just my take, like I said earlier. Uh, give me Bama in that one. Texas, Tennessee, who wouldn't love to see this? Uh, you got <laughs> an SEC matchup, and I think this is tough for me, man. I think that Tennessee wins this game. I know this is crazy. I just like Tennessee in this game. I just would. Um, why? If they played the start of the year, guys, like this, I'd still take Tennessee over Texas. I know that sounds crazy. That's a hot take. Um, I, I have no Tennessee bias or anything. It's just the simple fact that 
I'm not sold on Texas's defense. They lost so much talent off that defensive side of the ball that nobody's talking about. I don't like the injury bugs. I know Quinn Ewers. I know the receivers. I know they're loaded offensively. I get it. And they're going to be a really, really good team this year. People are sleeping on Tennessee. Like I said, every year I always kind of put my foot in the sand on a couple teams. You know, that's that's that that isn't the same as everybody else, right? It would be easy on here for me to copy and paste what Joel Klatt has or Fox News or Fox Sports or ESPN or somebody like that. I didn't do that. I got to take a stance, man. I said last year Florida State was going undefeated, dude. Won me a ton of money, and they did it. It was awesome, and I was kind of a Florida State fan most of the year. So that was neat to do. I'm kind of a Tennessee fan this year. I want them to win a bunch of games just so it makes me look good and makes me look like I know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? But – I like Tennessee in this game. I don't know why. I just think it would be a great game. I'd love to see this. I, I don't know if they play in the regular season. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But I know Tennessee and Georgia would, and I'm going to talk about that game right now. Give me Georgia. I do know they play in the regular season. Give me Georgia in this one over Tennessee. Georgia has pretty much owned Tennessee since uh, Kirby Smart has been there. I don't see that changing. Miami, Alabama. This would be a great game. This would be a great game. <laughs> Even though Miami... As good as they are, give me Bama in this one. I, I think it's destined that Alabama and Georgia play. Kirby Smart was 1-5 and five against Saban. They got to play again, right? That's why I love doing this playoff thing. I was like, man, it, it, would, it wouldn't be college football without Alabama playing Georgia at some point. Maybe they play in the SEC title game this year, too. I know they play in the regular season. I think they get a rematch here. Uh, that'll be awesome to watch if it does happen again. Moving on, Oregon-Utah. This is a tough one for me. I know this is an old Pac-12 rivalry. Kind of cool. Give me Oregon, though. Uh, Oregon too much offensively. Ohio State, K-State. Will Howard coming from over K-State to Ohio State, man. Like I said, my bracket's kind of cool because there's a lot of teams that there's there's some uh, chemistry there with past players, coaches, uh, SEC matchups, Pac-12, old school Pac-12 matchups. Give me Ohio State, though. Too much to handle there. You got the rematch. They could potentially play for a third time, just like Alabama and Georgia here. Kind of cool. Does it happen? I guess we'll find out. But Ohio State, Oregon, give me Oregon this time. Why not? I picked Ohio State to beat Oregon in the regular season. I'm taking them in the playoffs, so I'm flipping it around. Dan Lanning gets a job done. Alabama, Georgia, yes, sir. Give me Georgia. Kirby Smart, there's no Nick Saban. Give me Georgia in this one. Who would I have winning the national title this year between Oregon and Georgia? Well, guess what? Dan Lanning used to coach for Georgia. Give me Georgia. Kirby Smart too much. They played a couple years ago. It was a blowout. Oregon has gotten a lot better since then. Uh, Georgia will be my 2024 national champion. That's probably no shock here. I put a lot of money on Georgia to win the national title this year. Why? Because they didn't win it last year and they were left out of the playoffs. Kirby Smart uh, is a very intelligent guy. He's a driven dude. Um, I, you guys ever watch his pregame speeches? It's awesome. I, I like Georgia this year. I think Georgia is just primed to have a great season. It's not me dick riding Georgia or anything. It's just, man, I love what he does there. Defense travels. He's going to have one of the best defenses in the country again. You're in, you're out like he always does. I think this is how the playoffs are going to go this year. Uh, let me know down in the comments why I'm wrong. I appreciate it, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you agree. If you half agree, if you disagree, tell me why you disagree down in the comments. Love you guys, and we'll see you next time.